My name is Professor David Austin and this is a presentation about the Sacred Landscapes project. Um, this first slide uh, sets out in brief what it is we are uh, intending to do. We are looking at the notion and concept of sacred within landscapes uh, as they were articulated by medieval monasteries uh, and we're also looking at the long-term uh, changes. In terms of what the sacred is, we're building on certain theoretical propositions as well as empirical evidence. Uh, and the sacred concerns, uh, a list there that you can look at in more detail yourselves, um, but for concentrating on metaphysical meaning, the issue of the eternal, uh, things and forces beyond the control of people, strategies of identity and common action, moral action, the persistence of historical narratives and social memory, and the ethical sense of custodianship and protection. And this all relates to the notions of complexity in human agency and mental attitudes, which leads to decisions impacting, even today, on modern landscapes. Uh, the project methodologically believes that these understandings are best created by uh, a series there, again eight particular points that we are undertaking and uh, we are uh, using a comparative methodology, we're studying long-term history, we are reconstructing past landscapes uh, to reveal a long-term trajectory of land use change, we are deliberately and emphatically using a multidisciplinary approach which examines written history, the physical presence of the past world and its linguistic expression. We are deliberately working with communities, we're working on embedding the narratives within ongoing heritage structures and embedding the sacred through art installation and performance. Advocacy of the long-term view uh, within influencers uh, and policy makers. Um, in terms of comparison, uh, we are looking at uh, a number of landscapes, uh, notably the Strata Florida Abbey, a project we've been working on for 20 years, Kirk's Abbey and the Central Witham Valley Monasteries in the Lime Woods, and again another 20 year project. We're looking at Valla Crucis uh, and its texts, and physically we're also looking at Abbey Coombe here and its uplands. These are all Cistercian. Uh, monastery is quite deliberately chosen and the point of comparison is to look at the difference between upland and lowland and to look at uh, the difference between a non-state uh, political structure uh, in Wales and a state structure. Timescales working from early prehistory to the present day. Uh, the Strata Florida project which is this slide is on has at its core Tregaran Bog, which has a huge pollen sequence, uh, and we are looking at the way in which prehistory is there, laid out before uh, the abbey is there, including a sacred valley leading up to a complex of really interesting complex of monuments at Blind Glass Root. Strata Florida, we believe, is deliberately designed and inserted into that landscape. Very similar with the Lincolnshire landscapes that we're studying as well, our major comparator on the lowland. And we are looking at the six monasteries which lie down the edge of the lime woods between the Witham and the lime woods uh, on that slide. With a particular focus uh, on the Sturgeon Monastery of Kirkstead. Uh, part of the key methodology is regression mapping, taking us from the present day uh, land use and structure and layout of the landscape as you have it there in 1886 uh, on the uh, first 25 inch survey of the uh, ornament survey uh, and we've mapped it back to 1225 in fact actually we've mapped it back now to uh, the 11th century um, by regression analysis. We are working on um, medieval Welsh praise poetry and the iconography of landscape uh, here is uh, Valla Crucis uh, with a Google map in, in the centre. It is the Valley of the Cross uh, and the Cross, Elisex Pillar, is there 
uh, long before the Abbey is put into place. Again, an insertion into an already sacred landscape. Uh, we are working with community schools um, and uh, influencers, um, and you can see an array of photographs there, from a very broad range of activities working with communities, using arts and performance, uh, uh, as well as uh, trying to get the people who make decisions, who influence decisions, to come and visit us. Um, we're working with heritage organisations. Uh, this is at Strata, Florida, uh, where we've, we've taken over a series of buildings, uh, historic buildings, and we're in the process of converting them. Uh, the, uh, uh, um, an old dairy parlour, for example, uh, we've started on, uh, which is now converted into a community's meeting rooms. You can see there uh, massive funding coming from a variety of sources, including the European community. But we're also creating display signs describing how the landscape was used and undertaking a survey, as you can see in the bottom right there, uh, to uh, complete, um, to give us the data and the narrative. We're using art. I think this is probably our best piece of art at the moment. This is a statue, two and a half metre high statue of a pilgrim set on the hill just above the abbey. It's already attracted huge attention. Uh, and is now an icon of the Ceredigion on West Wales landscapes um, being used, for example, as you can see there on the left, uh, as book covers. We've been asked how we feel our project will enhance the landscape decision-making process in the UK. This is a little hard to evaluate as the project timeline takes us up only to 1891, um, the date of the first edition of the 6-inch, 20-inch map publication. Our most direct and long-term targets are the transmission of the landscape narratives within our local and regional communities and their embedding within heritage data and institutions, the communication of the significance of these narratives in understanding trajectory and reasons for landscape decisions taken by local farmers and landowners. It's very much a bottom-up approach. The representation to strategic policymakers that top-down policy and short-term implementation strategies can sometimes cause un uncertainty and lack of trust and cut across longer-term embedded attitudes to change, such as making a living and keeping respect within communities. Finally, writing about and performing the deeper meanings of landscape to enable complexity to be recognised, not just in academic publications, but also in other publications working uh, with the uh, arts uh, and poetry in particular.